Hey everybody, welcome home to the COVID patients that are being cared for by family members and even lay people, uh, family friends, and especially if nurses and um, aides can't get to your house. As I promised last night, truly a welcome home gift uh, for me to you. And again, be safe um, and just get everybody together and make a difference. So I promised a little bit of an exercise program, but first let me talk about the disease a little bit. We all have to know from a family member standpoint of view that somebody's coming home from the hospital just for the mere fact that they were immobilized and bedridden, not as active, wearing a mask, not seeing family, that suppresses you even more. It's different than an ankle sprain, but think, just think about what happens. You get, you atrophy, you get weaker, and you're tired. That's just a normal thing. Now on top of it, you have a pathology, a disease about the lungs, which suppresses your cardiovascular system even more. The oxygen delivery system to your muscles is less. Your motivation is down. Your spirit's down. Then when you come home, you think it's the homecoming of anything, which usually we talk about being a joyful thing. Homecoming king, queen, whatever it means, homecoming from college. This is quite different. So we have to think about that. So before the patient comes home, your loved one comes home, just have a plan. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna get right to it. We're gonna do some light exercise, but be mindful. And we talked about this all the time. If I have you doing upper body exercises, it's close to the heart, it's gonna make you fatigue a little faster. Just remember that. Not only that, if you do an upper body activity, you may get a little bit of a cough. Just because you're close here, proximity, and it wins you a little bit more. So we've got to think about that. Okay, so it's not to panic, that's just physiology. So if you notice that, it's okay to get mobility for movement, but also you got to think about mobility for lungs and then mobility for the mindset. So let's just start off with setting up shop in this isolated area at home. First, you want to definitely have a walker, okay? Now, some have wheels and some don't, okay? But if you have a carpet, okay, you have to think a couple things. If you have a carpet, the, it is going to be tough to slide on. So you may want to get some what we call skis or wheels. But be mindful, if you have wheels, it's going to be a little bit unsteady, unsteady for that person too, okay? If they have to lift up the cane, that could be taxing too. So ideally, sliding and gliding is the way to go. Okay, so just think about that process a little bit. And I know everyone has a floor and they may scratch the floor, I get it, but there's nothing that we could do about that. I'm just giving you the idea. The other thing is that if we wanna measure somebody for a walker, just be, just have the, have, have this up to here, okay? Makes it simple and have the elbows not like this, okay, and not like this, okay? So here, so it's like 20 degrees, that's important. So how do we decide on what kind of assistive device to use? Make it simple. I always say six legs are better than two. And then three legs are better than two. But let's just do the, the uh, walker for now, okay? So you have all that set up. So you want to have two chairs in the room because what you do it, you know, they may be deconditioned. So if they start to if they start to walk away from the chair, right here they may get tired. But you as a caregiver, right, has to go over here and get the chair behind him. But I want you to be coaching and doing your treatment from afar. Now you could say distance, if that's what you want, or this individual could be on the mode to be independent. But at least you set it up where it's like, okay, now I could sit here. And 
and then you get up. So that's important to have two chairs. So think of that as two stations. And then they get their breath, and then they go back. Okay, so before we start to do gait training, right? Okay, we can start off with some, uh, you're sitting in a chair up tall, good posture, and do heel raises. How many? Just think this muscle hasn't worked and moved in a long time. The one thing we want to do is avoid blood clots. I've been hearing even people with COVID, they're getting blood clots. No surprise because they're dehydrated, suppressed appetite, and immobile. So let's just think about seated heel raises. Bring your toes up to your nose. Okay. Just do a couple of them. Do some leg extensions. Leg extensions. Okay. Nice and easy. You're breathing. So it's it's important that when you exert yourself like this, if I'm exerting myself, I whisper to myself one. So it's one, two, three. So the last thing you want to be doing is holding your breath. Okay. The next thing we can do is hip flexion, just like this. These are all exercises that prepares you to walk and do stairs, right? Okay. Also the hip. Now you can even do some stretches too. Sit at the edge of the chair and just, we don't have to think to do this. I want to see up tall, toes to and just lean forward. Remember, you've been sitting down and this muscle here gets tight, so you want to stretch. So a lot of the body ache, okay, that we're experiencing, that's from corona, but also when you're immobile for weeks, you get body ache, you get stiffness, you get sore. So don't get confused with that. We need to push through. If you got sent home, you can do some exercise. Always gets clearance from the doctor. Stretch it so it's up tall and you feel a little pulling. Stretch. And make sure you're breathing. Just count to 10. Okay, the next thing in sitting, you can do open and close of your hips. Open and close of the hips. Just getting some hip mobility, okay? Next thing, okay, and the trunk. Just turn your trunk, trunk rotation. Turn your trunk, because again, this prepares you to walk, because then you can lift your leg up. Lifting your leg up, lifting, lifting your leg up. Then we're going to lift the arm up, lift the arm up. This is all sitting down, walking activity, okay? So we're actually walking in a chair and you're safer, okay? Shoulders, okay? Shrugs, just breathing, getting that lung expansion, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, okay? Scapsion, reach up. Open up the rib cage here a little bit, reaching up best you can. Of course, if you're older, right, or if you never exercise, your range of motion may be icky here. Don't worry about it, just go to that point. If you have pain or discomfort, just go a little less, okay? Just like this. Okay, this is scaption where you're reaching up and pulling back, okay? You do those exercises, come out to the side, okay? Out to the side, rotation. This is all up tall exercises sitting down. So all we're thinking of doing, just sitting and moving. Shoulder pinches, back and forth. So just think of moving your body when you're sitting. It's important to go over some gait training, really important. So I talked about the measuring of the walker, same thing with the cane at the hip. How do I know that I'm ready to get up and walk. Well, first of all, you came home and you probably got in your house, so you're probably in, in, in a pretty safe position. But ways to do that is you want to always start off with standing. So again, you know, you don't want to be pulling this. You don't want to be pulling this, okay? You can't do that. So you could actually use a chair with arms. I don't have arms on this one. Or leaning forward, leaning forward, okay? Lean forward and pushing up, okay? So you want to take your strongest leg back. So if my, if my right leg is stronger, bring it back a little bit and you can rock, 
okay? And you want to push. Now, you could also use your hands to give you some guidance. One, two, and three, up. And I have a walker here, okay? So a couple things, up nice and tall, okay? And what you want to do is, you always want to try and lead, lead with the weaker leg. So it's always like this, right? Because if I'm like this, if my left leg is weaker, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing that. Or you could just slide and just walk. Breathe in and you're walking, you know? And that's important to do. So pacing yourself. When we think to turn around, when we think to turn around, some people just kind of do that. Not really a good, safe idea to do. So you want to actually pivot around and turn. So turning takes some time, right? So you want to be able to do that and then head back or you set up the other chair. Now, whenever we're thinking to come into the chair, right? Come into the chair, right? You want to walk past the chair a little bit, right? And then you want to back up. You want to back up until your legs hit, until your legs hit the chair, okay? That's important. You don't want to be too far away. You want to cruise by it, pivot around, and make sure your knees are here. And then you could sit. That's really important. So making sure that you're close to the uh, chair, okay? So that should give you plenty of exercises to do. Talked about some safety issues. Make sure throw rugs and all that stuff are away, out of the way, that's important. And of course the caregivers cleaning up all the, uh, the instruments that you're using, it's really important. And also, if you are able to do this, you can definitely, like they say, clean up after yourself. So that caregiver at home who's, who's there, uh, you could also take a role on cleaning and being responsible to the whole radar ship for each other and the whole family. So until next time, Vince Burke on the COVID. Welcome home, exercise program, day one.